video, we're going to talk about the contractionary monetary policy, and this is where the money supply decreases or interest rate increase to uh, overall to decreased output. Now, we're going to jump right into it. You already know uh, how to start it off with the graphs and stuff, but immediately we're going to talk about the MS being decreases and decreases from MS1 to MS2. And this is always the process that would be good to follow because. Well, I'm teaching it to you, and uh, it's pretty good for tests, I guess. So it decreases MS1 to MS2. And right away, we know something else that happens. We know that the interest rate doesn't decrease. It increases from I1 to I2. So essentially, the next intersection point that we see on the, the graph that we just affected gets the interest rate change. So the interest rate rises from uh, I1 to I2. When I rises, we know that something happens with the bond, and that is the bond, of the price of the bond falls. And in this case, the CMP case, we don't have a capital outflow, but we have a capital inflow. And pretty much the opposite of everything that happened in expansionary monetary policy actually happens. So our exchange rate our currency actually appreciates and appreciates when the arrow is down and it depreciates when the arrow goes up and it's just like that I don't know why and something else happens the imports will go down or the exports will go down and the imports which is M goes up and why did this happen it happens for the opposite reasons of what I discussed in the EMP when the when the price of the bonds go down something happens uh, to the currency. Well, our our bonds, our domestic bonds, are demanded for, by foreigners. So our D bonds uh, are demanded demanded by foreigners. So in the CMP case, it's totally the opposite of EMP case, where uh, where the where our currency is demanded. So our domestic currency. They want our domestic currency. They're willing to give a lot. Our for these foreigners are willing to give a lot for our domestic currency. So our currency are worth more. So then, with a little bit of our currency, we can get a lot of their foreign currency. So that is what I mean by saying that our domestic currency, uh, our domestic currency appreciates. So appreciates, appreciates. Probably say that domestic currency demand increases now when our when our domestic currency appreciates that means that with a little bit of our money we can get a lot of foreign money and these uh, foreign and all these uh, foreign money we can use to buy more foreign goods so essentially with the same amount of money because our money are now worth more than they were back then we can now uh, buy more of these foreign goods and that is why uh, that is why our imports go up so our foreign goods are cheaper to us. Foreign goods cheaper because uh, because domestic currency is stronger. I'm sorry for the ugly writing, but I'm just trying to do this really fast. And that is why that is why uh, that is why the exports are actually uh, falling because because for the foreigners, uh, our products are our domestic goods, which are named D goods for time saving. These R goods are more expensive, are more expensive, more expensive, because because the money they need, they need a lot of their own money, their foreign money, to get like a dollar of our of our domestic money. The our exchange, the our our currency is much stronger than theirs, so that's why they need more of their money to buy, uh, to buy only some of our money, and that's why our domestic goods become more expensive than they were before when uh, our when our currency our our the strength of our currencies were pretty much equal, and that's the reason why all these happen, and that's the the main reason. All these reasons are the main reason why there's a capital inflow. Now something else happens to our consumption. Our consumption decreases for the opposite reasons that I've discussed in uh, EMP, and that is because uh, pretty much the I rises and our investments 
or investment falls, and that is because, again, because of uh, I, I, the interest rate rising. When the interest rate rise, you don't want to borrow anything, and when you borrow, when you, when you don't borrow, then you have less money to invest in, uh, to invest in things like your business or houses. And when this happens, uh, something, something else happens. The aggregate demand moves left from eighty one to eighty two. So let's take our aggregate demand and actually move it leftward to indicate the decrease. So aggregate demand eighty one to eighty two, and remember that price does not change. So, so then we just move to this same point where the price don't change and we take the intersection and then obviously from what we can see y1 decreases y1 decreases from y1 or y decreases from y1 to y2 and that's it for the that's it for the for the immediate period now for the short run period and I hate this notepad notebook where the colors don't change it's so stupid short run now short run and notebook creators if you're watching it please fix this fix the bug for me it really helps my videos <laughs> now short run right away what we can what we can see is that uh, well what we can see is that the price, yeah, the price falls from P1 to P2. So over the short run, every the price is fixed. So, or the price gets fixed. By that I mean that the price changes to back to equilibrium, back to the right place. So the price falls from P1 to P2, and this will be our P2. And this causes our money demand money demand to actually fall from MD1 to MD2 so our money demand will also move left so MD2 and the point where it intersects it's, it's just this point comes our new interest rate so I3 so interest decreases from I2 to I3 and Y would rise from Y2 to Y3 Y rises from Y2 to Y3 and yeah, this is pretty much the end of this video. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. It really helps. And yeah, I really look forward look forward to the next video.